Hey guys, before we get this Miami Dolphins mailbag started, you got to subscribe to the channel. This is your one-stop shop for everything Miami Dolphins news and rumors all season long. Week two of the preseason is tomorrow for the Miami Dolphins when they take on the Atlanta Falcons, but we'll be getting to your questions here in the mailbag. But before we do, be sure to hit that big red button below to stay in the know on the Miami Dolphins all season long. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome into Miami Dolphins today. I am your host, R.C. Maxfield, and, it, well, it's Friday on the channel, so that can only mean one thing. It's Miami Dolphins mailbag time, and y'all brought the heat on the questions this week. I will be 100% honest with you. So let's jump right into it. We got, well, first name. A lot to be determined there, but we'll move into the question. How long will Tua play against the Falcons? Yeah, he got to play into the second quarter, if you remember, against the Bears. It was kind of surprising in the sense that he came back out there for that third drive. But for me, I think two is probably going to go five or six drives on this one, however long that is. I expect a couple of three and outs, but also I want Tua to leave on a positive note. So if that happens on the fifth drive, take him out. If that happens on the sixth drive, that's okay too. Remember, there's only three preseason games this year, so you want to build that confidence with Tua out there against the team in the Atlanta Falcons that will probably be towards the bottom tier of teams in the NFL this season. So a good opportunity for Tua to boost his confidence and really start to you know build that repertoire with the wide receivers out there with Jalen Waddell. Devontae Parker might play in this one, and obviously Mike Gusecki played against the Bears and now will play against the Falcons too. So I expect five or six drives for Tua in preseason week two. Appreciate the question. First name. On to the next question we have. Dolphin 14. Should the Dolphins look in free agency for a tackle to help out with the O-line if Greg Little doesn't work out? So appreciate the question. Dolphin 14. Obviously Greg Little was traded to the Miami Dolphins earlier this week on Tuesday for a seventh round pick. The former second round pick of the Carolina Panthers. 37th overall is projected to hopefully make the roster. There's not a lot attached to him, obviously, with the seventh round pick. I slotted him right behind Jackson right now, but you could see him on the right side behind Jesse Davis. But to answer your first question, absolutely. This offensive line is a big question mark for the Miami Dolphins right now. And there is one guy in particular, I will give you two names, but one guy in particular I think the Miami Dolphins should go after, and that's Russell Okun right there as David DeCastro is also an option, but there's been reports that he just doesn't want to play football anymore because of health and everything like that, which you completely understand. But if I'm the Miami Dolphins, I 100% go after Russell Okun at the left or right tackle position, whichever one you want, because I truly believe he could be an impact guy. And he came out earlier this week and said, hey, I'm just waiting for a satisfactory deal. That's got to be a plus if you're the Miami Dolphins fans in terms of, hey, the front office has proven that they are willing to go out and better this roster any way possible. Maybe they spend, you know, a couple extra million dollars and maybe there's some guaranteed money on there, but also performance bonuses where if he does start a certain amount of games, he'll get more money. But I will definitely target him in free agency as he is an impact guy potentially on the offensive line for the Miami Dolphins. But hey, let me know. Should the Dolphins sign Okun or DeCastro? Type Y for yes, type N for no. You know where I'm going. I say absolutely on Russell Okun just because I think he is an impact guy when it, you talk about that offensive line because Jesse Davis performed well in week one of the preseason against the Chicago Bears. But Jackson on that left side has struggled a bit. Russell has a little bit of experience on that left side I think at worst he could be a guy that comes in and just makes an impact depth wise with those performance bonuses potentially on that contract that he would sign but right now he is a guy that I would absolutely target if I was the Miami Dolphins before we get to the next question on the mailbag got to shout out today's sponsor bet us Again, guys, it's football season. We're all excited about it, right? The Miami Dolphins week one against the New England Patriots. I mean, couldn't ask for a better matchup to start it out. And the way that the Patriots looked last night, well, I mean, Miami Dolphins are going to have to show up. And they will. We all know they will. But if you want some game action on that game, you got to head over to chatsports.com slash bet and use the promo code DOLPHINS125. They have the best deposit bonus in the entire game right now. On the internet, you don't have to search for a better one because this is the best one. You get 125% deposit bonus. So if you deposit $100, they give you 125 
free to play with on the site all season long. I used it last year. Still have money left over. You need to do the same for this season. Again, head over to chatsports.com slash bet, and remember to use that promo code DOLPHINS125 to get 125% deposit bonus. Next question on the mailbag we got from 26 Head. Is Wilkins just going to bull, be bull rushing or he going to be used as much as his athleticism allows? And is Brissett better behind a suspect offensive line than Tua? Let's answer that for that last question first. No, Tua is better Brissett. That's just He's just better than Brissett. I think that is a 100% a fact statement I feel very strongly about. You're going to start Tua simple and plain, right? But on the Wilkins front, he's interesting to me because – You've heard a lot in camp about him being lined up on different spots of the D-line, right? You've seen him at defensive tackle. You've seen him at D-end. He's been using that bull rush, but he's also been using some of his athleticism as well, which for me goes a long way because when you look at this defensive line, I think there are strongholds on it, and Christian Wilkins is one of them. But if you can manipulate him in terms of putting him in different spots and making that opposing offensive coordinator really think about the game plan that they put forward and present to the Miami Dolphins defense, I expect to see him bull rush, obviously, but his athleticism will be a key, key part, and he will be moved around on that defensive line all season long. Before we get to the next question, you got to smash that sub button. We mentioned it up in the opening, but I mean, this is your one stop shop for everything Miami Dolphins news and rumors, right? We give it to you for free. And the best part is if you get more subs, we give you more videos. And again, as I mentioned, it is free. So hit that subscribe button and stay in the know on your Miami Dolphins all season long. This from Alien Cheese. I'm not a fan of Alien Cheese. More of a pepper jack guy myself, but I'll answer the question nonetheless. Who's going to be the next guy to step up on the defense this year? Oh, man, I am absolutely in love with one guy in particular, the rookie safety out of Oregon, Holland. He is going to have a major impact this season, in my opinion. Now, he didn't play up in Oregon last season. He ended up opting out due to COVID-19, but didn't really hurt his draft stock too much in terms of him going in the rounds that he projected to be. Could have been a late first round pick. Ended up going in the second round, which really I think will play into the Miami Dolphins' favor moving forward. But for me, Holland has a chance to just be absolutely special. I think he could be one of those guys at the back end that really solidifies that safety position for years to come for the Miami Dolphins. Just think about it. You don't have to really worry about the one and twos in terms of the cornerback position because, well, you have Howard and Jones. Outside of that, you have some depth there that's maybe a little bit questionable, but you love what you have at those outside spots. I think Holland could even creep up, play some nickel, but he is really that center field type safety that can make an impact and has the ball skills that elite guys like a Kevin Byard or even somebody else has in this league because he is an absolute difference maker. And I mean, I think a breakout is potentially possible for this rookie in year one down on South Beach. Next question we got is a regular Great otter. I'm trying to figure out if there's different colored otters other than black, brown, and gray. Maybe some white. I don't think there's anything else, but we'll stick with gray as being our favorite since you send in these questions so regularly. Who will be the most targeted on the Miami Dolphins in terms of receiving core? Man, y'all should know by now how much I love one wide receiver in particular. But let's run through the depth chart again as we've done on a couple of these shows before. Right now, this is currently how it stands on the wide receiver depth chart. You have Devontae Parker at wide receiver one. Will Fuller, who has yet to practice, well, a lot anyway, as he has a one-year deal and will miss week one. Then you have Albert Wilson, kind of the surprise of camp before he got injured. He solidified that wide receiver three spot. But I'm going to go with wide receiver four, Jalen Waddle, and hear me out on this. He's healthy. How many wide receivers can you say that about right now on the Miami Dolphins? And I know he's coming off of a serious ankle injury, right, that he sustained at Alabama. But right now, he is a guy that is healthy, not injured, not coming off the pup list, has practiced every training camp practice so far, has made those cuts you want to see of a guy coming off the ankle injury that he has. I am 100% all in on Jalen Waddle in that Tua connection. So give me Jalen Waddle. I think he probably gets around in the neighborhood of 105, 110 targets. Remember last year, Devontae Parker led the Dolphins with 103 targets. I think the next guy afterwards won't be Devontae Parker. I think it'll actually be tied in Mike Gesicki, who was also second last year in targets for the Miami Dolphins. Appreciate the question, Gray Otter. We got one more before we head out of here. We got Stroke Black Kurt on this one. What will be 
the first win and loss of the season. Well, let's take a look at the Miami Dolphins' schedule on this one. As they open the season, as I previously mentioned, up in Foxborough, I think that's a win. So that there's your first win for you on that one. The Bills, I really want to say this is going to be a coin flip type game, but I also want to play it as one and one in this series. And hear me out in the sense that I think Miami wins the game at home against the Bills, and they lose the one up in Buffalo. So I'm going to go with the win there. I think week five, if it doesn't happen in week two against the Bills, is where your first loss is sustained against the Super Bowl champs in Tom Brady up in Tampa Bay. Again, Super Bowl champs, one of the best offenses in football, if not the best offense in football. And you could potentially start 4-0, and 3-1. I think you're going to take that if you're a Dolphins fan. Now, that is including if the Bills do beat the Dolphins at home. But for me, looking at the rest of the schedule, you have the Texans. That should be a win. Jets should be a win. Panthers win. Giants win. Thursday night football against the Ravens, who knows? You could go 4-1 and one there. Now, the interesting part about the whole schedule for the Miami Dolphins is that week 14 bye. That is a very, very late bye. Actually, the latest bye you can possibly have in the NFL this season. But then you come back with a matchup against the Jets. You play the Saints on Monday night football who may or may not know who their quarterback is at that point. Maybe it's a quarterback by committee still. Who knows? You play the Titans who figure to be in first place in the AFC South. And then you finish out the season how you started it only – at home this time against the Patriots. So I think you're looking again, as I've mentioned in previous videos, probably 12 wins, 11 wins in that range. I feel comfortable saying that, but the first win I think you get is in week one, and then the first loss is probably the Bills or in week five against the Bucks. But let me know, will the Dolphins win week one against the Patriots? Remember, it's in Foxborough, type one for yes, type two for no. I'm going with yes because, well, they may have looked good last night against the Philadelphia Eagles, but I think a lot of teams will look good against the Philadelphia Eagles this season. It's going to be interesting to see who that starting quarterback is for New England, but I am spamming that one in the comments for the Dolphins winning in week one against the Patriots.